In this video we're looking at the Voigtlander Heliart 50mm f4.5 lens and talking about version 1, version 2 and version 3. Let's have a look. Welcome back, Matt from MrLucker.com. Now this is Lens Reviews Series 1, Episode 19. In this video I'm going to include both like M mount as I just showed you this one and also like a thread mount or like a screw mount. So you get two in one with this video. I'll try and keep it as short as I can so let's crack on. Now the full name of this lens is the Voigtlander Superwide Helio 15mm f4.5 spherical and the one in my hand at the moment is the version 2. So as I understand it the version 1 released in the I think early 2000s is the screw mount version then version 2 is a M mount version and then version 3 is also an M mount version and that is the current version. Now each of these three lenses have slight differences so I'll put a table together at the end of this video and show you the differences between version 1, version 2 and version 3. So in terms of cost if you want to buy this lens new you can only buy the version 3 lens. I had a quick check online and the price new for the version 3 Voigtlander Heliar Superwide is £550 approximately depending on where you shop and used if you look on eBay you can pick version 1, version 2 or version 3 up prices very slightly but the cheapest of those three you can see them for under £300 so some of them are going for kind of high 280s and then they'll be going over 300 to 320, 350 things like that. Now in terms of size and weight the three versions of this lens are all different Version 1, the like a screw mount version, weighs 105 grams. Version 2 weighs 156 grams. And version 3 weighs 247 grams. So they are getting heavier with each kind of iteration. In terms of filter size, the original version 1, you cannot fit a filter. There's no filter thread on this lens. So do be aware of that if you like using filters. Version 2 has a 52mm filter thread and version 3 has a 58mm filter thread. So again, <laughs> the front of the lens is getting larger with, it, with each version. In terms of the design of this lens, all three versions have a built-in lens hood which you cannot detach and you, you cannot do anything with it. That's how the lens comes. The difference, I'll show you better. So with the version 1, the lens cap fits over the hood. like so. So that's for version 1. Version 2 it is a clipping cap that fits inside the lens hood. Now these lenses have half stop aperture clicks and go from f4.5 to f22. The same goes with the thread mount version. Now one difference between the version 1 and the version 2, silver being version 1, the thread mount lens will focus to 0.3 meters, whereas the M mount version will only focus to 0.5 meters. So with the wide angle lenses it's quite helpful if a lens can focus closer, so the version 1 does have the benefit in that regard. As the version 1 lens is thread mount, it means you have the benefit of it being able to fit on amazing cameras like this, like a 3A. So, so screw on like so. So that is one real big benefit of getting the thread mount version of this lens instead of the M mount version. In my eyes, if you like super small cameras such as this one. Now, if you're like an M mount shooter, you'll probably know no like a camera or no camera to my knowledge has a 15mm viewfinder meaning you cannot compose in camera unless you use live view on a digital like M camera that has the live view option so not the M8 or not the M9. So to use a 15mm lens for, to compose you need the 15mm Voigtlander viewfinder like so. Now make sure if you buy a 15mm Voigtlander lens that you get the viewfinder with the lens purchase because these viewfinders are expensive on their own so do make sure they come with the lens. So regardless of what camera you're using, to use the 50mm lens you would focus as normal and then you'd use the 50mm viewfinder on the hot shoe or cold shoe like so to compose your shot. And this can be on a Lycra M6, like M10, doesn't really matter. 
you need the hot shoe viewfinder unless you're using live view or an EVF. How amazing is that? Such a nice small setup. These cameras are amazing. If I've not already said that 10 times in previous videos. In terms of the look of the Voigtlander Subvoid Helia, it tends to have quite a strong vignetting around the, the sides of the photos. I'll show you an example in a second. And one thing to be aware of, the earlier versions of this lens have strong magenta cast on the left and the right of the photos. This is true when shooting on a digital sensor such as the Leica M9, as seen here, or the Leica M240 in this example. If you're shooting colour photos, then obviously you have no problem with colour cast. Now if you want to avoid the magenta colour cast, get the version 3 of this lens because that kind of issue was fixed with the version 3. I'll come on to some pros and cons of the different versions at the end of this video, so stay with me. Okay, so particularly looking at version 1 version 2, these lenses are sharp, they have heavy vignetting, they have magenta colour cast at the sides of the photo, but they are super sharp corner to corner. So everything, because of the depth of field at 50 millimeters, you get a really deep depth of field. Meaning if you kind of preset your lens to say one meter, one and a half meters, everything in the photo is in focus front to back. This lens is particularly good fun on the Voigtlander Besser L camera. And top tip, if you buy a Voigtlander Besser L, it is a very affordable way to buy this lens because you almost get the camera for free. So do check out the Voigtlander Besser L video. There is a slight overlap because I'll talk about that lens in that video and you'll see some of the same example pictures. But if you like the idea of that camera, highly recommend and if not that then try and pick up perhaps if you like shooting film obviously try and pick up a like a three camera if you want a small setup that we just looked at obviously i'm very pro film if you shoot digital this will obviously work on leica cameras and also other digital cameras via a adapter so in terms of uses for this lens you might think that a 50 millimeter lens is too wide and pointless and you can't do anything with it but it's actually more fun than you may think because of the close focus you can do kind of creative close focus photos as you can see here with these pigeons one of my early like m9 photos you can use it for wedding photography as in this example you can use it for street photography this is me toying around with the again like m9 at the time you can use it for kind of architecture shots and building shots if that's your thing cityscapes i find it particularly useful for kind of city environment where everything's really kind of close and tall and in a small space the 50 mil works really well because you capture obviously a wider view <laughs> it makes sense and then also what you may not expect is you can also use it for portraits i have tried some creative portraits with it i wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a portrait lens but if you want to try your creativity then you can take people photos with a 50 mil lens one thing to note with it being a wide lens, you can use this lens on crop sensor bodies to get a less wide lens. So for example, I use the 50mm on my like M8, which has a 1.33 crop, and I could also use it on the Leica CL, which has a 1.5 crop. And then you could even use it on a micro four thirds camera with a two times crop, if that's kind of your thing. So firstly, these are taken with the like M8. These are taken with the like M9. And these photos with the Leica M240. And now for a few film photo examples. These are taken with the Voigtlander Bess L as seen in that video, if you recognize them. Okay, so to summarize the three versions of this lens, which lens do you buy? Personally, I would buy the version one because I can use it on thread mount cameras and like air mount cameras. And it's the smallest and it's the lightest and it focuses the closest. And generally that ticks all my boxes. If you want to use filters, then you may want to look at version two because as I say, it's got a 52 mil filter thread but the downside is the Vision 2 is slightly larger and slightly heavier. Now if you want to avoid the colour cast, you may want to get the Vision 3 of this lens. 
which is again even heavier still and even bigger and takes larger filters. But I also read that although it fixes the magenta color cast at the sides of the photos, it also has the downside of being less sharp in the corners than version two. As I read, I've not actually used this lens. So just to make a note, so the source that I'm reading may be incorrect. If you use this lens, especially if you're a version three user, drop a message in the comments. Does it fix the color cast in all situations? And is it softer in the corners than the earlier versions? That's my understanding from kind of my own research when trying to put this video together. I can only talk from my own experience, which is the version one and the version two. That's it, I was trying to keep it short and sweet. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Please comment if you use this lens or enjoy this lens and hit the subscribe button so not to miss out on future videos. Thanks to our patrons and see you again soon. Bye.